through this door as an entertainer using this medium of acting to express myself, I found God. I found the power of empathy. And I also found my true passion of using the art of storytelling to be a healer. I remember my very first acting class by nothing else but the feeling. I couldn't tell you the name of the coach, what I wore, or how many people were in the class with me. But what I can recall is the sweat in my palms and under my arms as I waited silently in anticipation, and the puddle of sweat in my seat that I would subtly wipe away with a quick adjustment of my posture. Inside this dark room with one spotlight and a camera ahead of me, I sat in a tablet chair, waiting my turn to jump off the cliff that would unknowingly take me on the ride of my life. In that moment, waiting for the class to start, I can only remember thinking, if this was finally where my ambitions got me in situations my talents couldn't necessarily get me out of, or if this was simply a place that God sent me in search of something, something deeper within myself. See, people where I'm from didn't do things like this in their free time. At least it's not where they invested their money. At the time, instead of spending my hard-earned commission checks as a Victoria's Secret sales associate on cute club outfits, more underwear, or expensive dinners in the best food city in the country, I spent it there in acting classes for months developing a craft. I called it the amusement park of my emotions. On a day-to-day, I was in a part of my life that felt like I was standing outside of many doors of paths I could follow. The path of what others wanted for me, the path that I thought I wanted for myself, but the door of an actor was just one that felt more intriguing at the time. I guess the only reason I didn't walk out all of those years ago was because I thought to myself, maybe if I could pretend this well to be unfazed by the cliff of an experience that stood before me, then just maybe this was where I belonged. This episode will be an ode to the craft of acting and how it has made me better and more active in my own life. I've become a better listener to the people around me and the people I love and a fierce observer of life. There are hundreds of things in my experience as an actor that through my journey has made me more mindful and aware. And I coupled that up into an episode that I would love to share with you. Welcome to the Ron Hap Podcast where we get real and then some. I'm your host Jasmine Siri and every week I will discuss topics that realign with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. What is empathy to you? I remember a few years back when everyone called themselves an empath because they were really sensitive or because it was the cool and trendy thing to do to make a superpower out of our unprocessed traumas and hypervigilance. I called myself an empath and thought all of the angel numbers would lead me to my goals and instead it led me into this lion's den of my own unhealed versions of myself that I had to not necessarily slay but build a pride out of and use those emotions as tools when I needed. This served me as a performer. I never got entirely what I wanted out of the journey but I got exactly what I needed which was a real understanding of how empathy works through a hard look in the mirror of all of the empathy I lacked for myself as well as others in certain situations where I thought could never happen to me as if I was better or less deserving of certain hardships because of my own intelligence or so I thought. Through training, studying, and the breaking down of a character to become what the character needs to be in its truth, I realized very early on the amounts of empathy required 
that I did not have naturally or have not developed yet to tell a story authentically. I'll be honest, in order to trust the ride of the story, to let yourself go temporarily so that another person can live through you and make it real, I had to face my habits of judgment that came to me by a set of programming or cultural norms that I had no real connection to or real reasons for holding on to. And most importantly, holding on to these judgments kept me in a box that would only allow me to tell a story within the barriers that Jasmine, I myself, knows well. But what's the real fulfillment in that? What's the challenge in that? I think as a black woman, I'm already typed as only being able to tell specific stories. And how could I ever be more if I don't allow myself to be open to what more could mean? Even if it's something outside of my own norms or ideologies. Through this practice of getting to know different types of people and their stories enough to tell them, requires me to have space within myself to make those stories welcome and safe enough to be bold and make bold choices to express them. This is all because I care about them enough to want their stories told through me more than I wish to keep up the image of who I think I am. I think when you sign yourself up to go through the journey of becoming an actor, being at the forefront and taking lead in anything, you sign up to be of service. And in order to do that, these feelings of care and wanting to be of service and nurturing and curiosity have to be real. If I lied and pretended to care or only chose to tell stories that gained the attention that I myself wanted, instead of doing the actual work of being of service and letting another person's story be told so that a certain community or a population feels seen, I doubt my performance would read well. It wouldn't be memorable. I wouldn't be helping really anyone. And if I can be honest... The journey of an actor or the journey of wanting to be a creator is such a slow burn. You really have to love doing it more than you want to be loved by it because the reality of the journey is very seldom sustainable when you're in it for certain reasons. So when we choose to be creators, actors, storytellers, anything... It really involves us being of service, and do you enjoy the acts of being of service more than you enjoy being known for the service that you want to bring into the world? I think you get older and realize life just has a way of kicking you in the pants for you to see that it just happens. No one deserves the hard things or anything, so there's no one to blame. But everyone deserves grace and empathy, so there's always something to love or to have gratitude for. Bottom line, to needlepoint the benefits of this acting journey and how it's made me a more empathetic person is because I had to think, if I could give this real or fictional character the empathy and unconditional love enough to live out its truth, but not have the courage to do that for myself is absolutely wild, and there's no excuses for it. For some, method acting may feel spiritual because it requires a level of empathy, vulnerability, and connection with the character's inner life. The intense focus and the emotional investment can lead to a sense of transcendence or connection to something greater than oneself. And when I started to think of it in this way, I awakened. Take life as it comes. There is no real way to prepare. A lot of seasoned professionals in the entertainment industry stress on the importance of being prepared, being professional, having curiosity, trusting your director, but also trusting yourself enough to let your emotions speak, trusting your abilities to be human and be contradictory and make mistakes and honoring that as a better way for you to express yourself instead of it being something that you should deny or be ashamed of. I think when you're starting, the reality of memorizing lines is just a muscle you learn to build by developing study habits that work for you over time. What I mean is, if memorizing the lines is the bulk of your concern, 
I'm here to tell you that's the easiest part of the journey. You should prepare by having your lines in your system. And this allows you to be open to change, being open for your counterpart or the moment in general to breathe through you. That's where authenticity comes into play. Having the confidence in your abilities to understand your character's objective enough to live in the moment and allow the moment to tell the story more than the lines themselves. It's like this sweet spot of just allowing magic to happen. This prepares you for life because the more you experience life, the more you realize how flexible you must become to exist here. In the past, I thought that if I did all the right things or said all the right things, met the right people, memorized the lines, then all of the things I wanted would fall into place. And that sounded great. And we want to tell these younger versions of ourselves or younger people to always do the right thing so the mistakes don't trickle into their future. But at the end of the day, a lot of my mistakes have benefited my future in some sort of way. And... I think it was having the freedom and ability to make those mistakes that made me the person that I am today. And I'm not perfect, but I'm a little bit better than I was yesterday. It's like we want to put our best foot forward, but even our best steps, if not done with authenticity or in the wrong directions, won't hit the same no matter what, nor will they take us in the direction of our heart's desires. When the actor prepares, it's not preparing for perfection, it's preparing for an honest moment to happen. This will take vulnerability and an openness that if you're willing and you trust it, can bring you to beautiful destinations. So when you're finally at a point where memorization is no longer the fear, and you're finally able to be present in the moment to actively listen to the person you're in the room with and also make honest choices in the way that you express yourself, you're doing more than just reading through the lines or going through the motions. There's a part of you that can fully embody the person that you're trying to become. And that embodiment is something that we crave to see in a performance or in a person's life choices. We have to give ourselves permission to let go. That's the goal. That's where our spirit can be free. And the reason why acting is such a spiritual thing is because it takes a level of neutrality and nothingness to become whatever it is you are required to be. And if I continue to allow myself to get in the way of just the performance of being another person, I am grounding myself to something that isn't necessarily serving the moment, which is being fully this other person that I have to become. I hope that I'm making sense. When it comes down to you uh, being a creator and you being the head of your creative image, I think who you were before and all of the ways that you told yourself you couldn't become XYZ, that kind of has to go away when you're performing and you're sitting in front of a camera, or you're speaking in front of a microphone. Those fears, those doubts, and whoever you were in the past is no longer serving your present moment because you made a choice to be here. And um, I think in the moment, I well, I remember in my acting classes, I think what stuck out the most for me and my surroundings were, you know, I was always in classes with adults. Like we were all either they were older than me or maybe the same age or a little bit younger in my 20s. So it was interesting seeing themselves get in the way of their character and the ways that they judged the tone of their voice or how they expressed themselves because it was something completely outside of what they would do on their day to day or in their life. And I think once you get past that point and you strip the layers of who you are, not to completely get rid of yourself, but just allow something else to show through, I think that's when something really profound happens in the moment. That's what's really exciting. I think what life has unfortunately done to us is it's gotten rid of our abilities to play or 
or there's a part of us sometimes that needs permission to know when we are safe enough to just exist in the childlike playfulness that creating truly is, that creating allows you to be. Yeah, I remember taking an acting course just about stripping yourself of any judgment and just freely releasing yourself into the present moment in ways that you can get out of your own mind. Um, and I think what was so fun about it was because my professor, my instructor, which was an older woman, had so much life in her because of her abilities to be free and the fact that she was giving all of these adult or working professionals, or so we thought, the permission to be free and release and be as lame as we want, be as cool as we want, be as fun and express as as we want it was such a treat and it was such a gift because maybe in our day-to-day -day normal lives we don't have really the freedom and the permission to and um so anytime I take on opportunities or when I choose to express myself I do it in that way in my own way but I feel those ways I see it as release and that's what makes it very very healing we see now that there's no fun in pretending to have it all together. I think more people are willing to listen um, to something that is honest, raw, and real. I think where I'm at is I finally realize that I am enough and that this is enough. The imperfections that I have and the mistakes that I've made make me more interesting and it makes me a more layered character. And I suit the plot of my story with all of the texture and all of the quality that my story needs in only the ways that I can because it's my story and if I pretend that I had it all together it wouldn't be authentic or if I pretended like I had the answers to make things right in any and everyone's life it would just be immature to claim. Know your worth enough to live out loud in your life without having to ask permission to do so. I think as a performer, in a way that mirrors life, it can easily feel like emotional exploitation because we do all of these things for prep, for an audition, for a video, and may have multiple auditions and the feeling of excitement to have an opportunity to do what you love. And then when it doesn't fall through, you're left with all of these feelings of unworthiness and disappointment. Because no one sees all of the time and energy spent on preparing for a video, an audition, a role. So when sometimes all of the work seems unnoticed or just something that didn't serve the job, you learn to not take things as personally, but it's easier said than done, right? I've learned how to handle rejection a lot better. And it's also taught me to do other things, to take control of my own voice, my own career, and always have something to look forward to regardless. I have to stay in motion. I think as an artist, as a creator, whose success was always dependent on someone else seeing my talent, it didn't make sense for me to wait around for someone else to realize what I have. I think I'm worth more than that and I honor my worth by using my voice in other ways and diversifying my creative landscape so I'm always having something that keeps me inspired. This was so important for my mental health. I think before I had, you know, the podcast, the channel, I would get so down on myself for not booking the thing, not building that connection or adding things to the resume and it could be a mind trip. Because of all of the rejections and all of the years spent waiting on something to happen, the passion easily dies in that space. You either get more hungry and find better ways to cope with the disappointment or completely give it up altogether. And for me, I was just tired of giving up so many other things in my life that I was really great at. And my creative passions, although I try to do other things, there's such a large part of my life that giving them up is no longer an option. I know that for me now. This is something that was chosen for me. I don't say that this is a life I chose anymore. I think everyone is born with different gifts and different things and we have to honor them so that we can step into the lives that we are 
meant to so that other people watching us can see that there are other ways. So I hope you ask yourself, what is it that is stopping you from doing what you want to do? What's stopping you from doing the thing on your own? And maybe it's time for you to start doing your own thing. Thank you all so much for making it to this far into the video. I hope you enjoyed. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in my next one.